So this movie is on pivot tables, filtering and sorting pivot tables. We're going to begin by looking at the sorting options first in the field list and then on the pivot table itself in the rows and columns. And then we're going to add some report filters, which affects the placement of the filters, the visual display, basically. And then we're going to take a look at slicers, which was new for Excel 2010, which is another one of those must-learn things if you're going to use pivot tables. You've got to understand how to use slicers. Then we'll look at the report filter pages that creates a new worksheet for each one of the filtered items. And then we'll look at filtering values because that can be a little tricky. And finally, we'll look at sorting the pivot table. So I have some made up data. Again, it's a little different than what we've been using in the prior two movies. And since we're going to talk about filtering pivot tables, we need to create one. So I'm going to select a cell in that region, go to the Insert tab, left click Pivot Table, and I'm going to create a pivot table on the existing worksheet in cell I6. Left clicking OK and scrolling back up a little bit. And then I'm going to check a couple of check boxes to add some content to the pivot table. So filtering the pivot table. One of the ways to go about doing this is to left click the drop down that you see when you hover over one of the fields in the field list. We're presented with a sorting and filtering dialog box. Now, I'm not going to cover all of the different aspects that there is to filtering in general because that was covered in another movie. What we're interested in is filtering the pivot table specifically. So I've got three salespeople that I can select all or select one or two or three of and set up a filter. Left click OK. When I do that, I get the little funnel icon that tells me that there's a filter that's been applied in both the field list and the row label title on the pivot table itself. If I clear that checkbox and remove salesperson from the pivot table, I don't lose my filter. You can see that icon is still displayed. And when I left click and add it back to the pivot table, my filter is still intact. And that's true even when I move the field to a different drop zone. So I'm going to left click to add the product line which since it's numerical, Excel will add it to the values drop zone. And when we have more than one value in the values drop zone, the column labels drop zone will display sigma values. But I don't want the sum of the product line because that wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to grab that and move it over to the row labels drop zone. And then I'm going to move my salesperson field over to the column labels drop zone which brings us to the second place that we can establish filters which is in the row and column labels themselves. We already have a filter in the column labels because we selected Jimmy to be the only salesperson's results to display in the pivot table. I'm going to select all of the salespeople, left click OK. In the row labels, the same thing. If we choose to display the sales for product line 1, left clicking OK, that filter is at work in the pivot table and it's also going to be displayed in the field list. So those things, as you might guess, sync up. They stay consistent with one another. I'm going to select all again, and left click OK. There is yet another way that we could establish some filters for this pivot table and that's to add fields to the report filter drop zone. So I'm going to move salesperson over to the report filter drop zone and grab the discount field and drag it into the report filter drop zone right below the salesperson field. When we do that, we have the option to establish a filter either by left clicking the drop down arrow on the pivot table itself or left clicking the field in the pivot table field list. I'm going to again select Jimmy as the salesperson whose results I want to see, left click OK, and I'm going to go back to the pivot table and select multiple items where I want to show the sales for which there was a discount of 5% or 10% and left click OK. So I've got a grand total of $90,614 
And I want to point out a couple of things. One, it doesn't make any difference if the salesperson is listed first and the discount is second, because I can change the order of those two fields and the total is the same. So the filters are cumulative and the ordering doesn't matter. The other thing I want to point out is when we set up the discount filter, we selected sales that had a discount of 5 and 10 percent. On the report filter, it tells us we've selected multiple items, which is probably less than ideal because we really don't know what those items are just by looking at the pivot table. In the case of salesperson, we selected one of the values, Jimmy, and that's displayed accordingly. So I'm going to move the pivot table around a little bit by left-clicking the salesperson field and moving it over to column labels and then dragging the discount field off the pivot table completely. So we can set up filters in the pivot table field list or we can set up filters in the row labels and column labels or we can set up report filters or, and this may be the best thing yet, we can set up a slicer. With the pivot table selected in the sort and filter group, there's an option to insert a slicer. I'm going to left click that command button and I get the insert slicers dialog box. In this dialog box lists all the fields that are applicable for the given data that's associated with this pivot table. And all of the fields are displayed regardless of whether they're in the pivot table or not. Currently the date field and the discount field are not in any of the drop zones. But I can create a slicer or a filter by using any one of those fields. And I get the slicer displayed with the filter we had applied earlier in the movie to just pull out the sales that had either a 5 or 10% discount. The nice thing about this is, whereas before when we had the discount in the report filter drop zone, and when we select multiple items, it just said multiple items, the slicer will actually display which items you've selected and filtered on. To clear the filter, click on the filter icon that's got the red X next to it. And to establish a filter, just left click one of the items. If you want to establish a filter with multiple items, hold down the control key and you can select non-contiguous items. If you want to have a filter based on some contiguous items, left click the item at one of the extremes, hold down the shift key, and then left click the other item. So I'm going to select the slicer and delete it and go back to the Options tab and in the, in the Sort and Filter group, left-click Insert Slicer. And this time I want to insert two slicers, the discount amount and the gross price. By clicking OK, and separating these a little bit, and moving the gross price over and expanding the slicer out a bit, scrolling back up. The slicers will automatically adjust the display of these options so you can visually tell whether they're applicable or not. So when I select 5% discount, there's a lot of the gross price amounts that are not active. They are dimmed because they are not applicable sales prices for the sales that had a 5% discount. And when I select one of them, the pivot table generates a result of nothing because I don't have the case where I have a sale with a 5% discount and an amount that's $1,089. But if I select one of the other values that's not dimmed or grayed out, it's an applicable value given the fact that I've already filtered on the sales with a 5% discount. So this is a great way to visually display the filtering options and what is applied in terms of filters to your pivot table. As with many other objects in Excel, when you select and activate one of the objects, in this case it's the slicer, we get the contextual tab the slicer tools, the options tab, which includes in the slicer group, slicer settings, which allows us to rename the slicer to display a heading that has a caption that we determine. We can sort and filter the items either in ascending or descending order. We can use custom lists when sorting or not. We can visually indicate items with no data, which is what the default setting is. We can show the items with no data last, 
Both of those have to do with the fact that the items that were not applicable for the 5% discount were grayed out. And finally, we can deselect the show items deleted from the data source, which many times you may want to do that. Because if your data source changes, and let's say instead of Jimmy, Mike, and Rob, we change the data to only show Jimmy and Mike, Rob will still be displayed on the slicer unless you clear that checkbox, show items deleted from the data source. So I'm going to cancel out of that. We also have the ability to point the slicer to a different pivot table. Now I only have one pivot table in the workbook, but if I had another one or several more, I could point this slicer to a different table. I'm going to cancel out of that. And then we have some formatting options and we also have the ability to establish our own custom format. I'm going to cancel that. The next group of options, the Arrange options, has already been covered in another movie. It's associated with all sorts of objects that you can select and move around on your worksheet. In the Buttons options, we have the ability to change the number of columns that are displayed in the slicer. This can be real useful if you have a whole lot of options like we do. And then we have some control over the height and width of the buttons and we have some control over the height and width of the slicer itself with the dialog box launcher as well which gives us some more options as far as the sizing the position and layout as well as the properties settings which allows us to determine whether we want the slicer to move with the cells and or be resized when we change the column width or the row height we can toggle the print of the slicer on and off and we can set some protections up for the slicer as well. And finally, there's the alt text, which allows us to describe and define a name for the slicer for people that have disabilities. So I'm going to close that. So with all these different ways we have to get to the filtering functionality, you may end up building some filters that might be difficult to ferret out. We currently have three filters at work. And it might be a little bit cumbersome to go back and individually clear all the filters. Well, there's a way to clear all of them at the same time by going to the Options tab in the Actions group, left-click Clear, and then left-click Clear Filters. I'm going to left-click the slicer and delete that one and left-click the other one and press the Delete key and get rid of that one as well. So there's another way to generate some filtered output that's available to us when we have a report filter. I'm going to make the discount field the report filter by dragging it to the drop zone. And in order to do this, we're going to go to the pivot table options tab, which is where we are now. Go to the pivot table group, left click options, and then left click show report filter pages. And when I left click that, I get a listing of the filtered fields, of which we only have one, which is the discount field. I can select it already selected. Left click OK and I get a separate worksheet set up each one containing a pivot table for the discount levels of 5%, 10% and 15%. I'm going to go back to the data again. I'm going to select the entire pivot table and then delete it because we're going to set up one more pivot table and create a copy of it so that we can look at filtering values. So I'm going to left click a cell in the region that contains the data, go to insert, insert pivot table. I want to insert it in the existing worksheet in cell I6, left click OK. And I want to get a subtotal by salesman by product line. And again, since it's a numerical field, Excel thinks that I want to sum it and I don't. I want to sum the gross price. So now I'm going to select the entire pivot table, press Control C, go over to column M, Control V, and create a copy of that pivot table, resizing the columns a little bit so we can read it. And I did this so we can talk about filtering values. Now when we go to the data, I'm going to click off of that pivot table and scroll up a little bit, we can, as I'm sure you know, set up a filter and left click the drop down and filter on specific sales prices in the data. 
I'm going to control Z to undo that. I'm going to clear the filter from the data. It looks like we can do the same thing in the pivot table. Because when I go to the gross sales price and hover over that and get the drop down, left click that, I get the same sort of looking filtering options. But when I clear that checkbox to select all and I select only the top three that I did before and left click OK, nothing happens. It looks like there's a filter that's applied to the gross price because we see the funnel, the filter icon, but nothing happened in the pivot table. Nothing was actually filtered. And that's because within the pivot table, we can't filter out the individual items that are in the values drop down zone. What we can do is filter those values in terms of how they're aggregated on our pivot table. So what the heck do I mean by that? Well, first I'm going to clear the filter from the gross price. And the reason why I have a copy of the pivot table will become clearer, but it's because I want to keep a visual display of the values that we're imposing some filters on. Because without the use of slicers, we can't visually see what we're filtering and what we're not filtering. It kind of happens behind the scenes. So I mentioned that we can't filter out the individual data points that make up the values and that we have to filter on the basis of the aggregation levels. We have two aggregation levels in our pivot table. One is by salesperson and the second one is by product line by salesperson. So I can establish value filters at both of those levels. First going to the salesperson, hovering over value filters and going to greater than or equal to if I input 145,000 and left click OK, Rob sales, which equals 135,690, are filtered out of the display of the pivot table. I can also filter on the second level of aggregation, which is the product line, going to value filters, greater than or equal to. I'll pick 35,000 as the value. So we ended up applying two filters to this pivot table. The first one that we applied was at the salesperson level where we just wanted salespersons shown that had a total sales amount of $145,000 or greater. And then we filtered on the product line by salesperson where I just wanted the aggregate total for each one of the salespeople by product line displayed that is greater than or equal to $35,000. Now the thing is that the total amount of sales shown now for Jimmy and Mike are not greater than the first threshold that we set up for the first filter, which was to be greater than or equal to $145,000. Their total sales are greater than $145,000, but when we applied the second filter to show product line sales that are only equal to or greater than $35,000, the total amount of sales for Jimmy gets reduced to what was sold for product line one and four, which is $95,296. So filtering values gets a little tricky. So the things to keep in mind are one, that you can't filter the values in the field that's being, in this case, summed, which is the gross price. You can't filter out individual data points. Two, you can apply a value filter to a level of aggregation that's in your pivot table. In this case, we've aggregated the sales by salesperson and by product line. And three, these filters apply to the total data and not to what's displayed in the particular pivot table. So the sales total for Jimmy was over the threshold. Jimmy's sales are going to be displayed in the pivot table even though we truncated the display of Jimmy's sales to include only the sales for product lines one and four. So finally, we can also sort the fields in the pivot table. And we can sort the fields independent of one another. In other words, I can select the product line and sort in descending order, and then select the salesperson and sort in ascending order, and that does not affect the sort of the product line. And we also have the option to sort manually in case the option to display them alphabetically, either descending or ascending, 
is not how we want to do it, I'm going to left click OK, we can instead grab the field name and manually sort them in a different order. So that's sorting and filtering pivot tables. We began by looking at the different options we had as far as accessing the sorting functionality, beginning with in the field list. We also had the ability to sort from the row labels and the column labels on the pivot table itself. We could add fields to the report filter drop zone and filter those fields either in the field list or directly on the pivot table itself because they're listed above the pivot table. We looked at slicers, which were introduced in Excel 2010, which is a great way to visually display what's filtered in your pivot table. We looked at report filter pages, which for report filter level filters, we'll set up a different worksheet for each one of those filter values. We looked at how to filter the values in the pivot table. And finally, we looked at the sorting functionality with pivot tables.